Hey everybody, David Barnes here with another episode of ET Info, where I bring you information on emerging technologies from IBM. This is the first video that I got to go on the road in the field, and I left my green screen hovel, and I had the opportunity to tape an interview between Rod Smith, my boss, IBM Vice President of Emerging Technologies, in the video he's the man in black, and he met with Stephen O'Grady, an analyst with Red Monk, and they talked about big data, about Hadoop, and a little bit about our project Big Sheets. Now, this video, I intentionally made a little more technical, still high-level technical, but technical nonetheless. I made another video that's a little more business-oriented. I'll tell you how you can find that at the end of this video. And at this point, I better just be quiet and let them do the talking. Uh, so, Stephen, you've spent a lot of time on Hadoop and mm -hmm. working in the industry and watching it. Yep. How does it look to you next to other emerging technologies and other trends? Um, I would say it's certainly one of the more popular um, mm -hmm. that we see. You know, when we talk to customers, we look at you know what's going on with developers and the essentially the assorted ecosystem of products and projects that are around it. Um, you know, non-relational uh, data uh, mechanisms and databases. Have become a lot more popular, mm -hmm. you know, certainly over the last you know twelve to eighteen months. Hmm. Um, of them, uh, Hadoop is clearly you know the the furthest out in front, you know, both from a maturity standpoint as well as adoption. Mm -hmm. um, so really, it's becoming you know really quickly becoming uh, the default uh, non database um, option, you know, for enterprises really large and small. Do you see Hadoop as you know fundamentally changing the way people look at data? Oh yeah. Um, you know, I have to caveat that by saying, you know, we've had the ability to uh, work on um, and ask questions of very, very large, large data, data sets mm -hmm. for a long time. All right, so data warehousing and so on, those technologies aren't going away. It's a, it's a complementary piece. But it does change um, the accessibility of that data. Um, it, ch it changes the ability uh, of individuals and small companies you mm -hmm. know, to work on that data. You know, because to do being open source, obviously, um, makes it accessible in ways that you know, some of the very, very high-priced, high-end data warehousing technologies are not. Um, the way that the technology scales um, in a pretty in linear fashion um, you know, across, say, cloud environments or even you know, inside data centers allows, again, you know, even small companies and individuals you know, to attack data sets that really would have not been practical or um, economical you know, to attack um, in years past. So um, you know, while you know, we can ask and answer some of the questions using previous technologies. Hadoop uh, allows us to do it much more efficiently um, mm -hmm. and at a much, much lower price point. It's been interesting when, when I found, and we talked about this earlier, that a number of the customers I talked to have installed Hadoop. Mm -hmm. and, it, and they're still kicking the tires on it. Yep. But as you just mentioned, they started from, um, I have a business problem I think this might address. Mm -hmm. And then you said the approachability of it. Mm -hmm. It's very done very well, easy to install, sure. easy for someone to administer. Mm -hmm. We gotta have computer, you know, yeah, IT skill yeah. a little bit, but mm -hmm. it doesn't it's not foreboding. It feels like it's you know, it's a simpler way for me to get an answer to my, my yes. problem. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's certainly true. Um, you know, and, and granted, you know, I think that there are there are definitely areas where it needs to improve, you know, from an accessibility standpoint. It's not yet to the point where um, you know, you can you know throw a vanilla Hadoop installation at you know say uh, the person in your organization who's typically used to using Excel. Mm -hmm. Although hopefully you know that'll change. <laughs> um, you know, but it, it's it's really at a point now where you know with a lot of the different interfaces. So you know we have Dumbo that will allow uh, Python um, you know, programmers to you know leverage the functionality. We have things like um, you know Pig, you know which will allow people who have uh, some SQL skills. You know, to access it. So, you know, we're opening more and more doors, mm -hmm. I think, every week um, to the underlying, you know, power of the platform, which, you know, again, is allows you to operate efficiently and cost effectively on, you know, databases, databases of really massive scale. One of the things our team has learned in doing the early engagements on Hadoop is uh, working with the BBC. And what we did was actually run Hadoop on four ThinkPads, kind of duct taped together. <laughs> What we found, though, is we didn't really have to do much to keep it running. Right. It just ran. Yep. And the experience has been, talking with people, that that's one of the big value points of Hadoop is mm -hmm. the low operation cost. Has that been your experience talking yeah, to customers? Yeah, I, I think absolutely. Um, 
really what we see is is a cost reduction across the board. Right, so the cost of acquisition, you know, have come down because mm -hmm. right, the, the software itself is open source if you want it to be. Uh, the hardware can be acquired economically uh, through the cloud if necessary or, or internally. Um, but when it comes to the operational costs, certainly we see a, a reduction there as well. Because many of the, the typical data maintenance costs, you know, that we see associated with uh, schema maintenance, uh, schema updating, uh, essentially keeping you mm -hmm. know, the infrastructure up and running, uh, tuning it, um, you know, all these these costs that go into, you know, making up the total cost of ownership for, you know, large scale data solutions, you know, if they're not erased, you know, they are greatly reduced. Hmm. Um, so the cost of keeping them up and running and, you know, essentially asking larger and larger uh, questions um, really is, is uh, pretty accessible, you know, even to businesses of small sizes. So one of the things that probably interests us as technologists is big data mm -hmm. and being able to use this in ways people hadn't expected. Sure. But tell us what you take as a way that our businesses take away from the value standpoint of sure. it. Sure. You know, and, and I think it's, I think you're right. I think as technologists, we sometimes get carried away with some of the numbers, you know. So, um, you know, the New York Times, you know, ran a piece mm -hmm. uh, uh, back in December, you know, talking about the fact that every American consumes 34 gigabytes of data a day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a month before that, Facebook was at Hadoop World talking about, you know, the fact that they're generating 24 to 25 terabytes a day. Um, you know, so, you know, these are numbers that as technologists are impressive to us and, and you know, are very meaningful. Uh, from a business standpoint, they don't mean anything, right? It's, they're just numbers. Um, because what's important really is not the numbers, it's not the data, it's what we can extract from the data, mm -hmm. right? And that's why, you know, tools that, you know, not only help us to process that data, um, but actually help us answer uh, questions about that data uh, and essentially deliver that in a meaningful fashion um, are so important, you know, because ultimately, you know, businesses, you know, in this climate, you know, are going to be, you know, increasingly pressured, you know, from all quarters. Um, it, which means that you're going to need to seek an edge. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and that edge very frequently is going to come from you know, understanding your trends and your data better than your competitors. Um, so the businesses that, that don't invest um, in understanding this are going to be at a, at a disadvantage you know, relative to those that do, um, because when you have better data, you know, more often than not, you're going to win. Well, I couldn't have said it better myself. No, really, I couldn't have said it better myself. As I mentioned, this is the first in a two-part series around Big Sheets Big Data, Hadoop, and Rod and Steven talking, and this one being a little more technical. The business version that I edited up is out on YouTube, where I put all of my videos, and you can find them at youtube.com slash ibmetinfo. And if you want to learn more about uh, Big Sheets, the project our team's working on, you can visit our website there, our JSTART team's website, and that's ibm.com slash software slash JSTART. And I will see you next time on ET Info.